Shure released the SRH 1540 as their premium closed back headphone in 2013. They claim it delivers superior acoustic performance for engineers, musicians, and audiophiles alike. Do they meet the lofty claims of the Shure marketing department? Let's find out. Let's take a deep dive with the Shure SRH 1540. Alright guys, today we're taking a look at the Shure SRH 1540 closed back headphone. This is the box that comes in, nothing really noteworthy there. Inside the box you get a manual that you're probably not going to read. And then most importantly you get a nice case. The unique thing about this case is that it's actually a hard shell case. It has a textured finish to it so it feels really good but it's nice and protective for your headphones. It has a zipper enclosure. You open that up and then inside you get two pouches with cables in them. We'll talk about that shortly. And then you obviously get the headphones and then a little compartment here that has an extra set of ear pads. So pretty cool in this package that we get two sets of ear pads. These are Alcantara material. They have a nice memory foam on the inside. They really feel really spectacular. They're a very, very comfortable ear pad and you're getting two sets. So and then we have the headphones. The headphones are really, really lightweight. The cups themselves are really nice. They have a faux carbon finish to them. Everything here is colored plastic except the yolks I do believe are aluminum but still they look rather nice. The yolks have a nice smooth sliding mechanism for sizing and then they are clearly marked left and right which is handy. I would say the biggest issue I have with the entire enclosure itself is that the cup articulation is minor. It has a little bit of vertical movement and virtually no horizontal movement at all. The underside of the headband is nothing right home about. There's two little comfort pads there. Again, there's not really much weight, so you're not dealing with a lot, but still just not very impressive. On the underside here, you can see where we have the MMCX connectors. So if you don't care for the cables that it comes with, you can replace it with your own. But these are lightweight, great ear pads, you're getting two sets of pads, two cables, which I think is fantastic. And the build is pretty good. They're pretty lightweight, but I don't really have any, any major gripes except for when I wear these, I need them all the way extended. Unfortunately, the cable is nothing really to write home about. You get two of them. They're about six feet in length. You do get a quarter inch screw on adapter that comes in the package, which is good. But outside of that, you can see this is the one I've been using for a week and it is fairly unruly. The MMCX style connectors mean that you could replace it with a different one if you want. So with that, let's pop them on the mini DSP ears and see how they sound. All right guys, so here we are looking at the frequency response measurements of the Shure 1540. You can see, just taking a quick look at the response, we have a pretty emphasized uh, bass range. The mids are extremely accurate. And then the treble is dialed back in the sensitive region and then for a little bit more air is kind of dialed up a little bit there. There is that spike there, uh, about 8K, that can be a little bit bothersome for some people. That one did not bother me. The thing is, is the bass is so raised above the mid-range and the treble with you for, when you first put these on with no EQ, they come across exactly what you would think they would based on this measurement. They're too bass heavy. It's not balanced well at all. It's too emphatic. It's, it's rather, it can actually be a little bit fatiguing, which bass fatigue in a Pro Studio headphones a little unusual. Comparing it quickly to the Sony MDR7506, I compared it to this headphone because the 7506 is a good entry level closed back. There's a couple things I think it does really well. It's a good monitoring headphone. It's really to accentuate spoken word and male and female singing voices. That's what that headphone's supposed to do. You can see that the Shure has way more trouble as you would expect. It has less mid-range, and then the treble spike that's in the 7506 is much more dramatic than any of our treble spikes in the Shure 1540. So that's just a good look against an entry-level close back. Right. This is the Audio-Technica M50X. Highlighting the 1540 over that, you get more bass in the 1540, better bass extension in the 1540, and then the M50X is raised in the mid-range and the treble as well. The M50X comes across as a pretty bright headphone for a lot of people too. Some people need some correction to not have those upper treble spikes be fatiguing. And then here is the DT770 Pro. 
32 ohm with pleather pads. And you, this one does a good job telling the story of just how emphasized the Shure 1540 bass is. You can see that it pretty cleanly hangs out above the 770 there. Uh, the 770 just having better bass extension. But the bass in the Shure, while it's more tastefully balanced with the mid-range, that transition is a little smoother, it's still overly emphasized. The 770 is a pretty boomy headphone. In the treble region, you can see that the buyer dynamic has an infamous spike that's bound to cause a lot of people listening fatigue. The Shure is much more dialed back and appropriate really in that area. And lastly, I had the buyer dynamic 177X Go from Drop and Buyer Dynamics collaboration. And you can see overlaying these two headphones, the Buyer Dynamic 177X has a, a better behaved bass response, a nice clean transition like the Shure has, but it's more well behaved in the, in the actual bass region. And then the thing I didn't like about the 177X is that driver, they use so much dampening to avoid any fatigue. They really took it below and and made it kind of mask some detail. One of the things that I thought would be helpful here is I want to look at some distortion characteristics. Now, I don't normally do this because the Mini DSP ears has a lot of limitations as far as distortion measurement. The acoustic environment plays a lot here, and so I, I just want to make sure that we didn't get too carried away. But the Shure 1540, if you read professional reviews, is often criticized for having driver clipping and distortion, especially in the bass region, which is makes sense at loud volumes. I think that we get a little too carried away sometimes with distortion characteristics. So now this is a measurement at 85 decibels, and this is the distortion characteristic of the 1540. So if we overlay the Sony 7506, which is an entry level headphone and costs a lot less, you can see that it also has a lot more distortion. Highlighting the 1540, you can see that throughout the entire frequency response, it has a lot less distortion than the Sony, which is good to know. I mean, you're spending more money and you're getting something out of it in regards to sound, you're getting less distortion. When you move up to the Audio-Technica M50X, again, here's the 1540 highlighted. You can see the 1540 has less distortion, except for when you get down to the, the bass notes there, there's just a couple spots where you can tell the Shure is overemphasized and it's causing some additional distortion there and the M50 in those small little areas is winning out because of that. And then in comparison to the DT770, here's the 1540 highlighted. You can see they trade blows here. The 770 has less distortion in the bass, which isn't surprising because the 1540 has been overly boosted in that range. And then the 1540 comes back and pretty much wins the rest of the spectrum. And then when we compare it to the 177X Go, the 177X Go wins in the bass again, and then they trade blows the rest of the way with the Shure being the cleaner of the two for most of the spectrum, but not by any audible amount. So I, I just throw this out there because I think it's a good grounding practice to remember that I think a lot of people would be stunned when you're putting a headphone on a measurement rig and dialing it in for about 85 decibels, and then you go to listen to it at that volume on the amplifier. I think you'd be shocked at how loud that is and maybe how a lot of people wouldn't play a game or monitor music or anything like that at those levels. You might get carried away after a couple of drinks listening to music and start to creep up above those, but I don't think any sustained practices for a long period of time are really going to. So really the Shure really has a very nice frequency response for a closed back headphone. Pretty impressive, really. The only thing you need to do is dial in the EQ on the bass. So I will give you guys my settings for those. And then uh, I think this is a good point to move on. All right guys, so what do I think of the Shure 1540? I think it's a great value proposition. I think that when it comes to build, I do wish that the cups would articulate a little bit more on the horizontal plane. I think that they're gonna extend plenty long for a lot of people, but there's bound to be some folks out there that they don't get quite long enough for. Outside of those two instances, I think that you have a headphone that's really lightweight, comfortable to wear for a long period of time, and has amazing ear pads. And not just amazing ear pads, you get two sets of amazing ear pads. So when you get, when one set gets fully compressed or stained, you can swap them out, brand new set, ready to go. I think that that's cool. I think the whole value proposition that Sure is offering, saying, hey, you throw down this investment, you get a hard shell case, two cables, two sets of pads. It means that they believe in their product, they think you're gonna love it, and it's gonna last a long period of time. I think that's a cool way to do business. I also think that when it comes to frequency response, 
These are a little bloated in the base. Out of the box, if you can't EQ these, that would be a deal breaker for me. I do need a correction in there. I'll throw my EQ settings up on screen. I believe I do about a 6 dB correction around 125 hertz. And with that, they become a very linear, very clean analytical headphone with some nice tight bass that extends really, really well. And when you take that frequency response and you apply that to like competitive gaming, you will have a blast. These are awesome for competitive gaming. The sealed out ambient noise does a good job of keeping all the detail in. It's a very linear response, so you get a lot of good footstep accentuation. You don't miss any detail. The imaging and stage are spot on. I would say that when it comes to competitive gaming, this is my favorite closed back to date. So I've been waiting for another great closed back to come along for competitive gaming. This is it. If that's why you watch my channel and you're looking for a good closed back, you could easily throw down on these and be really comfortable with them for a long time. Now, I do think that there is a thing online you read about distortion issues at high volumes, and that's real. I think the people that are targeted for this, that are going to be doing monitoring, mixing, mastering, or competitive gaming, I think you're going to be well under 90 dB. I think that that applies to more people than not. Now, for some audiophiles, some people who are doing some movie watching or single player gaming that really like to get a hold of the volume knob and crank it up, this probably isn't the headphone for you. If you get to 90 dB and above RMS on a regular basis, you're going to get a lot of distortion. That's where this falls apart. That's where it takes a lot of uh, punches online. However, I think for the vast majority of people that need a closed back headphone that can do a little bit of EQ tweaking, these are a big time win. I really like them. So hopefully that helps you guys make a purchasing decision. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed making it. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter so that you can see what I'm working on and testing next. And don't forget to like and subscribe so I can keep doing reviews for you. Stay safe out there. Take care.